What's going on, everybody? And welcome back. My goal is to get 15,000 subscribers before Christmas. So if you are new to the channel, or have yet to subscribe, do so now, and make sure you click that notification bell so you never miss another video. Anyways, let's get on to these tales. My wife and I are both in our early 60s and retired. We had just bought this small cabin in Sullivan, Missouri, which is just a little bit west of Merrimack State Park. It really is a sight to see out here. It's incredibly beautiful, to say the least. Especially the Merrimack Caverns. There's beautiful lakes out here to go fishing, camping, whatever you're into. If you're an outdoorsy person, you will definitely like it out here. That's why we did our research and moved out there to retire. Once we had finally settled in, we called our kids just to let them know that we were okay. You think it would have been the opposite way around, right? The kids should be checking up on us. We're the ones who had moved and retired and all. I like a good cigar like the next man, with a cup of Jack Daniels with some ice. I just like to sit on our front porch at night and just examine the stars. My wife can't stand the smell, and she has no interest in drinking, so she usually doesn't go outside unless we're going on a hike or something of that nature. It was a cold and windy night, from what I could remember. I was just sipping on my Jack and Coke and just sitting in my chair, puffing away, staring at the moon. I started hearing large cracking noises somewhere out in the wilderness. It sounded like something was moving around in the forest on our property. I could hear the snapped twigs and branches from the right, then straight out in front of me. It was pitch black out and there was really no way for me to see whatever it was that was out there. I've heard rumors, but I don't believe in any of that kind of stuff. But I was still curious to see what was out there that was on our property. I took another swig of my jack and just stood up out of my wooden chair. I placed my hands on the front porch railway, squinting my eyes into the further of the darkness. It was still too dark for me to see anything. I put my glass down on the side table. I quickly went inside and grabbed my flashlight and went back onto the porch. I had one of those heavy duty mag lights that worked extremely well for my benefit. Unfortunately, I aimed the flashlight into the direction from whence I was hearing those noises in the woods and turned it on. There was nothing. Then I turned the flashlight in a different direction further forward. I saw movement, and I held the light there and examined my eyes in that direction. That's when I got a quick glimpse of it. This large, furry, ape-like man was just standing there by the trees. It stood there like it thought it was camouflaged or something. It had a very darkish brown-colored fur. It stood upright like a human being, but its face was more like a gorilla. Its eyes reflected from the flashlight. I jolted my wrist out of fright, and when I shined it back in its direction... The thing was gone. It had completely disappeared. My buddy and I were hiking over at the Hoosier National Forest. We're both from Chambersburg, Indiana, which is just northeast of the National Forest. We were hiking at Young's Creek Trail, which is roughly a 10-mile loop. It's more of a casual walk in nature if you want my honest opinion, but it's beautiful out there. It was definitely going to take some time for us to hike 10 miles, so we definitely packed up a lot of snacks and lunches in our backpacks. There were some kind of rough areas where there was a lot of trees that were broken over. They had some pretty muddy sections as well, but you could just walk around those. 
Around two miles in, there's a paved road crossing which is not indicated on the map. Just across the road is a creek crossing, but the water wasn't particularly deep in this spot. We did come across some deer tracks, which we found pretty interesting. A few miles in, my friend and I did see a bedded spike buck. And if memory serves me right, around the seven mile mark, I noticed that the trail was going in a different direction from the map had indicated earlier. For a moment there, we thought we were going off track and may have gotten ourselves lost. Eventually, we stopped and ate our food and decided maybe we should just turn back around. Eventually, we found the right way to go, and we were probably about a mile or two out before we were finished with the trail. I had a sudden eerie feeling that something was following us in the woods. We've hiked plenty of times. We've never been here, though. This was our first time on this loop trail. I asked my friend if he felt a certain kind of way, too. He just said no. He watched one too many movies. We're almost back to the car, just let's just get going. I brushed it off for a while. We were getting pretty close to where his car was parked, and I started feeling fine again. That was until we both heard the noises in the distance behind us echoing amongst the trees. We both stopped in our tracks and just listened. Was it a bear? Or was it something else? I looked at my friend and said, What the hell is that? He was a loss for words and just shook his head at me. We both turned around. There was nothing in the woods. We slowly started walking towards the car's direction once again, cautiously, keeping our ears and eyes on full alert. A few minutes had passed. We started hearing these growling noises that were definitely closer from the noises that we had heard earlier. Whatever was out here with us was getting closer. Too close for comfort. I suddenly had a chill go down the back of my spine when I heard it. At that point, I turned around. That's when I saw it. This large furry black beast was standing up on its back hind legs with pointed ears and red glowing eyes just staring at me with a long snout and razor sharp teeth. Its claws, its claw hands were at least double the size of mine. And I'm 6'2", I'm a, I'm a big dude. My heart was pumping out of my chest. I thought it was going to crack my rib cage and sternum. I motioned my right hand to grab at my friend to capture his attention. But he wasn't there. I turned my head to the right, and he was already booking it towards the car. My friend freaking left me. I turned around and started booking it in the direction my friend was running in. Hey! Wait up! We made it back to the car. We got inside his vehicle. And we booked it out of there as quickly as possible. I'm a single father of two. I rented an Airbnb cabin over in Plymouth, New Hampshire, near Newfound Lake. It was a three-day getaway planned for me and my two girls. I had recently moved up to New Hampshire for work purposes two years ago. My girls have never seen snow in person before, so I knew it was going to be perfect. 
It was winter time, the snow was heavy, I had a 4x4 in chains, so I wasn't really terribly too concerned. I had a lot of things scheduled out. Scary stories around the fireplace in the cabin, hot apple cider, hot cocoa, home-cooked barbecues on the back porch, as long as the snow wasn't too heavy at least. I wanted to take them skiing too, but in the back of my head I think they would decline. I would just leave that as an option, I guess. When we had arrived, it was gorgeous. It absolutely was amazing. They could not keep their eyes off of the snow. It was white in all directions, and heavy too. But that's what I wanted. I wanted them to experience snow and its full potential out here. They flew in in the late afternoon, so it took a little while to get to the cabin from the airport. When I pulled up, the snow was a little thicker than I really wanted it to be, but we made it there fine. We unpacked their luggage and went inside and I turned on the heater. It was a really small, old 80s looking unit. So I started prepping some wood from outside that was pre-chopped from the Airbnb and started to make a fire at the fireplace in the living room. They told me about their summer, things they were doing in school, and their friends, and whatever other topics they were talking about that evening. Grilling on the back porch was a no-no that first night. It was already dark and it was splintering cold outside. I figured maybe we'd try that tomorrow, maybe for lunch. So I just ended up cooking some food in the kitchen. It was a small cabin. A little two-room, one-bath type of deal. It was cute in its own way, though. Everything was entirely made out of wood. It looked pretty old, but it had updated appliances in the kitchen, which was great. That night, I put my girls to bed and I laid in my own bed in the room just staring at the ceiling. I was in a deep thought about what to do for the next day. I thought maybe we would go on a little hike in the snow, just let them play in it and build some snowballs and snow angels and things like that, and then go back to the cabin and I'll cook something up on the grill on the back porch. It sounded like a good plan, so I dozed off and went to sleep. But I was awoken to something. I heard something outside the window of my bedroom. Something cryptid echoed in the distance in the woods. At first I thought it was a bear or some type of coyote or something of that nature, but I couldn't pinpoint what exactly I was actually hearing. couldn't figure it out. Whatever it was definitely sounded like it was really close to the cabin, and that worried me, not for my safety, but for the safety of my two kids. If I got woken up by hearing this, then I'm pretty darn sure that they're awake and freaking the hell out right now, not knowing what to do and probably bawling their eyes out. I remember just sitting up and leaning over the bed into my backpack. I grabbed my air horn. Yeah, that ought to do it. I grabbed the air horn, stood up, and went over to the window. It was foggy out the window. I could tell it must have snowed while we were sleeping because it looked a lot fuller and higher in the trees and on the ground. I wiped the glass. It didn't really do too much for me. I unlocked it and slid the window open. I pointed the air horn out the window and pulled the trigger. Now if my kids weren't awake from before, they definitely were awake now, I thought. As soon as I released the trigger, I saw this large, furry, blackish-brown beast running away from the side of the house out into the woods right in front of me. Whatever the hell was making that noise was right up against the wall of the house on the outside of the cabin. It looked like a giant gorilla, but it, it wasn't running on all fours, it was running on its back hind legs. 
Thank God I brought that air horn. My wife and I were camping in eastern San Diego County. There's a lot of mountain areas and forests that people don't really know about out there. They just think it's Julian and Alpine and that's it. But they're wrong. There's other beautiful sites to go camping at and to explore hiking. Once we had arrived, we unpacked and got everything set up at camp. The weather was nice outside and we had ate on the way up, so we weren't terribly hungry at the moment. My wife... God, she always gets me to go hiking with her. I can't stand it. I complain and I try to make up any excuse possible just to hang back and relax on the property. I'd rather just chill with the tent, smoke my cigarette and just relax. But no, she wants to go exploring nature. We saw nature the whole way up here. But I'm not going to start an argument, so I said sure. But please, nothing with too high of an incline. I'm fat, I don't know how much I could take. She just replied, Well, I'm fat too, and that's why we're going hiking. Yeah, whatever. I grabbed my water, and I followed her out towards the trail entrance. I won't lie, there wasn't really a steady incline, so the hike was actually kind of nice. There was a lake that we passed at the very beginning, and then we just headed deeper and deeper. I had no idea where it ended up. Did it loop around, or were we just going to get lost? She just told me to stop complaining, and we will turn around when we turn around. I could see I wasn't going to win this battle, so I just kept quiet and behind her. I figured she could go first. I'm in no hurry. About an hour or so in, I started to complain. I didn't bring the right type of shoes. I just brought some Nikes. I didn't know I was going hiking or anything crazy like that. Eventually, I won. We both turned around and started heading back towards the campsite. On the way back, though, that's when we had our little encounter. We started hearing these weird noises far, far off in the distance. There was an open plain field right next to where we were and where some other wooded areas were way off in the distance. We were hearing these weird noises. We couldn't pinpoint what the heck they were, what animal, where exactly it was coming from. We just knew it was somewhere off to our left, way out on the other side of that field. We didn't see anything in the field. It must have been coming from the wood line behind it. We just continued walking and staring to our left. That's when we saw it. This large black wolf was just running across the field. Hmm. So there's a wolf out here. I thought there was only coyotes, I told my wife. At about midway through the field, though, this wolf hopped on its back hind legs and started running like a man. It darted off in the woods behind us, probably a good hundred yards, maybe more. It shocked the hell out of us. Did you see that? I remember shrugging to my wife. That frickin' coyote wolf thing just hopped on his back legs and started running. She said, yeah, hey, let's go. We both booked it on that trail all the way back to the campsite. We talked to the park ranger, or the people that were working at the campsite. I don't know if they're rangers, they probably just worked there. They told us the rest is sure that nothing ever happens at the campsite. But this is not the first time that they have been notified of this type of sighting. They believe it was the Dogman. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed the four true Dogman and Bigfoot sighting stories tonight. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Share me with your friends. And spread me like butter. Mmm.